This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Hi, and welcome to episode 1 of Pokemon Ecology's Phylogenetic Tree series. Today we're looking at my estimation of a Pokemon phylogenetic tree. If you missed it, go check out this short for context and rules. Carnivorans in real life are essentially the groups of cat-like and dog-like animals. They are defined as carnivorans mostly by head shape and teeth. Carnivorans also split into two groups, Filiformia, the cats, whom have double-chambered ears, and Caniformia, the dogs, who have single-chambered ears. Considering we don't have skulls and we're even lucky enough to get consistent teeth, the tree consists of Pokemon that closely resemble carnivorans, which I'm dubbing Carnivoroidea, and is organized around major features other than cat-like and dog-like. Starting off, we have the group mimicking real-life pinnipeds. These Pokemon are clearly quite different from others of this tree, with some having merged their feet with their tails in evolution. While Rain is the initial breakoff of this tree, these Pokemon still maintain their tails and feet, for some reason redeveloping them as they mature. Walrein's scientific name is Odopagan Binus, a reference to how it breaks ice with its teeth as well as a reference to Walrus's real-life scientific name. Primarina and Dugong are paired as they both combined their feet and tails into a fin for swimming. Interestingly, Seal are showing up in Alola, perhaps signaling that these Pokemon made such a journey in ancient times until something had interrupted it, perhaps vicious currents. As a result, I'm lumping these two into the same genus, Sela, literally Seal. See Ursus Arctos for why this name isn't that weird. It's also technically not Latin or Greek, but there are a few cases of that in real life. Dugong is Sela Scelerus, meaning thermal, in reference to the thermal energy stored in their bodies. Primarina is Sela Eliquivox, meaning liquid voice, as a direct reference to liquid voice, Primarina's hidden ability. Moving on to the main element of much of this tree, though still related to the pinnipoid group, we have the Prototail family. This is where we see beginning developments of tails in these Pokemon, which ended up being a key for much of this tree, spinal complexity. We have Zeraora as an initial breakoff. It lacks a tail entirely. It could be as well that this cape is a simple structure developed to bring partial tail benefits, as capes do come up along the rest of this branch. Following along just after Zeraora is Zoroark. Zoroa has a tail that entirely undevelops as it matures, with its role likely being replaced by the long, bushy hairdo that, again, may serve as a tail replacement. Both of them also have this lean-in stance, but that itself doesn't mean much. The strange arm structuring and the very thin abdomen, however, do signify a possible shared ancestry. I've debated on whether these two should be in the same genus, and I think not. That being said, they likely share a family. Zeroa's scientific name is Velocitus Felectrica. Wholly uninspired, with fast lightning cat, but this Pokemon has no biology to talk to us. Zorox is Turba Pristrigia Residem, loosely translating to Reclusive Group Illusionist, as they protect their denim packs with illusions. Hisuian Zorark is Turba Pristrigia Malum, Evil Group Illusionist, as they're remarkably evil Pokemon. Further down, we have a number of Ursiforms, bear-like Pokemon. With the exception of Gramble, these Pokemon have small primitive tails initially that develop away as they mature. Additionally, they're all bears, with two sharing this cape trait. Gramble is unique in developing a small tail rather than losing one, but I don't know where else it would go on this tree. Gramble would share a superfamily with these Pokemon, but it would likely be in a separate family with the scientific name Purpiscata Simulafides, roughly meaning ending tail mimicking confidence or protection. Ursaring is Territorium Gulo, territorial hunger, referencing the claw marks the species leaves on fruit trees favored by them. Bear Tick is Territorium Ira, territorial wrath, due to the many entries referencing its violent and aggressive disposition. Urshifu and Pangaro are within the genus Collector, meaning combat. Urshifu and Pangaro's species would be Peritus and Irritabilis, skilled and irritable or sensitive, referencing, of course, Urshifu's practicing of fighting and Pangoro's sensitivity and quickness to fight. Eevee is a Pokemon whose position is correct, in my opinion, though the branch may not even be here. This Pokemon may be an ancestor of all of the following Pokemon. Within the evolutions, we can see major elements of future Pokemon in this tree. We see a head gem, a forked tail, scent glands, a neck organ, and frictive fur. All of these are noteworthy attributes in determining entire branches further down. However, it's not likely to have stayed the same as whatever ancestor has given way to all of these species, so I give it its own sprig rather than making it a note. Eevee's scientific name is Prosarmastone Omniovolvo, meaning adapting every evolution. The adaptations, referencing Eevee's ability to accommodate its environment down to matching its trainer's face, and every evolution, obviously referencing its many evolutions. Here we have a small garbage bin taxon. These will be more common as the series goes on, so I'll explain. In real life, evolutionary biology is very difficult. As a result, animals that have strange and patchy adaptations are put into garbage bin taxa. The family Kalugridi in real life is a perfect example, where the snakes here are so ridiculously variable from one another. Anyway, I have absolutely no clue where these Pokemon will go in the street, so I've put them before any major adaptations on any particular branch. Catus gossipum means felt cat, referencing its high quality fur. Lipard's scientific name is Catus fur, funnily. Fur translates to thief, just to be clear. Up next is a multifaceted major branch. Early on, we have Mianxiao and Lucario, 
These Pokemon have rudimentary fur adaptations and strange growths. Mian Chao has a regenerative hair adaptation that may split from something we see further on, and Lucario has strange growths on its body, which is common among a few branches on the street. This is also reminiscent of the durable head growth seen on Berserker and to the other Pokemon along this branch. Magnafemur Vis is the scientific name for Lucario. Magnafemur translates to large thighs, which is less Mimi than Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla, literally tribe of fairy women, tribe of fairy women, tribe of fairy women. Vis is force or strength, referencing its aura divination. Magnafemur Martialis is Mian Chao's scientific name. This references the fighting, instead of the regenerative fur, to parallel Lucario, the other member of this genus, whose name refers to their aura, which they commonly use in fights. Ignoring this branch for the time being, we move onward to Absol, who seems to be somewhat underdeveloped considering the other Pokemon along this branch. All of these Pokemon have this gem in their head and are plantigrade, at least partially, but Absol seems to be in a midway of developing plantigrade movement, or is perhaps unevolving it. The tail is quite similar to what we see in Weavile's family, and the head structure is similar to a Berserker's horns, or particularly, Sneasler's ear. Celeritus Calamitous is what I'm naming Absol, Celeritus for speed and Calamitous for its ability to sense disasters. While foresight might be a better word to describe it, I really like how this name sounds. It's fun to say, like Mephitis Mephitis, striped skunk. Now we'll talk about Meowth, whose head gem was a point of interest for me as a relation to Sneasel as far back as Sneasel's video. Sneasel and Weavile share very similar feet to Meowth. Persian lacks these feet, but Berserker has feet similar to Sneaseler, even down to these fur cuffs at the feet. One important element to note here is that Galarian Zigzagoon is the older variation of Zigzagoon. Galarian Meowth may be an older Meowth subspecies. This makes me wonder if Galarian variants had some event where they somehow moved to other land masses. This sometimes happens in real life due to once present land bridges or major flooding, washing animals to other land masses. However, it's entirely possible that this major terraforming event came from a Pokemon like Groudon or Eternatus. Weavile being at the end of the tree may read like it's more evolved than these Pokemon, but this just means it's more specialized. This line has poison glands, an evolution of the simple weaponized claws possessed by Berserker. As to the purpose of the head gems, I'm unsure. It could have developed as a breeding preference. In Berserker, they're used to show fitness and are placed on hardened fur helmets, so this may be common behavior among them. The genus for all of these Pokemon is Mitra, meaning headdress, in reference to the gem on the forehead. Cantonian Persian is Hellas Superbia, in reference to the fur prevalence of the species biology and the subspecies wrathful pride. Alolan Persian is Pelus Cruciatus, meaning torture, as the species is quite brutal, torturing caught prey for fun. Berserker is Pelus Armatus, armed, as this Pokemon has dagger like claws and armor like fur. Sneasler's scientific name is Unguictus Insidious Noxia. Unguictus loosely translates to claw weasel. Insidious means ambush as the species fights with ambushes. Noxia means toxin, referencing Sneasler's threatening venom. Weavile's is Unguictus insidious coetus, meaning group, as Weavile fights in packs and even communicates their raids with each other. Back further up is a major split in the tree. This path mostly deals with major fur adaptations, with this branch containing some variant of hardened fur or otherwise specialized fur. Berserker's line may be along this branch, but I think it's simply a convergent trait. Near the beginning, we have Poochiana and Zigzagoon, both of which have bristling fur which may be the initial stages of development for fur specialization further down this tree. Poochiana bristles the fur by the base of its tail in intimidation, but Zigzagoon has permanently bristly hair. To be honest, this is probably a pet theory, but I think these Pokemon may be very closely related. The actively bristly fur doesn't match well, but the fact that Galarian Linoon looks like a shorter-legged Mightyena is fascinating to me, especially as Galarian Zigzagoon is the earlier form. Persekindos is the genus for these Pokemon, meaning Pursuit, as Pursuit is heavily emphasized in the deck centuries. Seta Protenus is the species for Hoenian Linoon, meaning coarse fur and straight line, as their coarse fur is prized for brushes and they almost exclusively run in straight lines. Seta Antagonista is the species and subspecies of Obstagoon, Antagonista meaning antagonist. Mariana's species name is Fidelis, in reference to their pack lifestyle and loyalty to the trainers, if they recognize them as leaders. They're not getting a separate genus because I believe that they are closely related, but you could disagree and provide your own genus if you'd like. Moving on, we come to Stoutland and Furfrau, two Pokemon with very durable coats. This is the start of some very unique adaptations. Lillipup has sensitive facial furs used as a radar, possibly for being able to suss out hiding prey like Patrat or to detect predators. Herdier and Stoutland have this cape of hardened fur draping over their bodies. Herdier's fur is even constantly growing, much like Mian Chao's. Furfrau has this defensive and regenerative fur as well, but unlike Mian Chao, it doesn't have the behavior to trim it down naturally. Durabilis is the genus for these two, which has an obvious meaning of durable. Implex is the species name for Furfrau, meaning tangled, and Emicus for Herdier, meaning friendly. 
Next up, we have Mabaste, whose durable coat is paired with a new adaptation in the form of energy storage in the Dew Lab. This eventually develops into the collection's adaptations down here. Mabaste mostly uses this to repel attackers from their progeny. However, more creative uses are evolved from it later. Mabaste's scientific name is Reponovis Familia, meaning energy repelling family, as they collect and expel energy to repel attackers from their family, which actually happened before the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, where Arvin's Mabaste protects him from a fatal blow in Area Zero. Electric has frictive fur used to generate electricity that enhances their muscles, but the stored energy is also discharged for defense, much like Mabaste. Bolton generates electricity and uses it to enhance its musculature as well, but it's not stated how other than the base of its tail, which could reasonably be assumed to be the bristling fur from Puchiana, as a few Pokemon here bristle their fur to generate electricity. Shinx does this all as well as giving itself the ability to see through walls in its later life stages. What an absurd adaptation enabling an utterly terrifying predator, the Pokedex Special. Electric and Bolton are likely very close relatives, and the only reason I'm not listing them as subspecies is because I'm reserving that for regional variations. Progen Electrica Accio is Bolton's scientific name, meaning electricity generation. Fetch, as it's the only Pokemon with a ball fetch ability. Electric species name is Linear, meaning to ease, as they use the electricity generated in their body to soothe soreness in their muscles as they tire. Shinx's is Verumvisus, meaning true sight. Arcanine and Houndoom are here next to these Pokemon because it's reasonable to assume the energy storage from the Dewlap and the energy harnessing from the fur have somehow co-evolved into the fiery furnace in these two Pokemon. It's also a decent guess to say that Arcanine's propensity to rocky fur and Houndoom's durable armor may be of similar origin. Houndoom's toxic smug may very well come from diet. Kaleo Canis is the genus name, meaning Flamehound. If you think this is uninspired, Canis Rufus literally means Red Wolf. Kaleo Canis Fidelis Concetus is Cantonian Arcanine's name, with Fidelis meaning trust same as earlier, and Concetus meaning sprint, as this Pokemon is known for running blinding speeds across great distances. Fidelis Calcify is Hisuian Arcanines, as stone deposits from volcanic gases have deposited onto its coat. Houndoom's scientific name is Caliocanus Venenum, with Venenum translating to poison, of course referencing its poison smog. Ending this branch, we have Delphox and Lycanroc, whose fur is further specialized than the other Pokemon of this branch. Lycanroc has literally developed a rock growth in its fur, and Bryxon and Delphox have tails so frictive they act as a match striker for their sticks. I believe this wouldn't be doable without some element of unique chemicals in their fur, so they're located onto this branch of explicitly rocky fur. Notably though, I'd like to mention that this whole branch could be changed considerably in a still sensible way. If one were to argue that frictive fur gives way to hardened fur, then Electrex tree would likely be further up, with Mabastus energy storage being an underdeveloped relic from a common ancestor before the split. I, however, do not think this is the case, so I place them like this. Delphox's scientific name would be Atratus Magica, meaning abrasive magic, referencing its magical abilities, obviously, and the abrasive match striker-like fur in its tail. Lycanrox was a little bit difficult. These could all be considered subspecies, but they're from the same new bio form, so it's more like a job or specialization than anything else, leading me to Craggy Dog Hunter, because they all hunt and they all have this rocky fur. Back up the tree and down another major split, this is a collection of Pokemon with intense spinal complexity, with the most minor adaptation here being the cinching forked tail present in Perugly. Just so it's known, these Pokemon may not even belong in this carnivoran tree. The development of whole new bones is very difficult. Even giraffes have the same amount of neck vertebrae as us, they're just huge in comparison. I've ended up deciding that they belong in this tree, but let me know if you all agree or not. Glameow and Perugly see the beginning of the development of split tails with Perugly's cinch tail. The first instance of fully split tails is Meowstic, who grows a second tail in development from Esper. Up next is Floatzel, who perhaps belongs in the upcoming tree branch of Neck Organ, but this could just as easily be a big flab of airy fat. These Pokemon have split tails for their whole lives. Finally, we have Vulpix, who starts with one tail but grows it into six as the nymph form matures, each tail splitting from the main one. Three more are grown as the Pokemon develops into nine tails. In these families, the tails actively serve a purpose, element expulsion. This is my argument for why they're at least as specialized and developed as Floatzel, considering Floatzels use it for locomotion, but don't grow more tails. Her ugly scientific name is Felis Sopor, meaning cat sleep for their supposedly hypnotic glare. Meowstic's scientific name is Duocarafilis perdicio, two-tailed cat destruction, so named for their supposed ability to grind trucks to dust. Floatzels is Duocada Luter Perfluo, two-tailed otter drifter. I'm sure you've noticed the naming scheme by now. Ninetales' scientific name is Multicada Mantea, multi-tailed diviner, with Mantea being the origin of Mancy at the end of words like pyromancy. Cantonian Ninetales' subspecies name as a result is Foita, which is Greek for light or fire, while Alolan Ninetales' is Pagos, Greek for frost. 
Here we have the sprig of coincidentally feline Pokemon. All three of these Pokemon have some sort of strange organ structure on their neck. Neoscarada has a flower bud that it uses as a weapon. Further on, Toracat has a fiery bell that eventually transitions to its waist, which, as the thumbnail points out, is totally ridiculous. And finally, Pyroar has a mane of fire, presumably being fueled by something. If you put these guys in the garbage bin family with Skitty, I can totally understand that and even partially agree, but presumably, these flames are coming from something, and that something may very well be a neck organ. Neoscarada's scientific name is Gatos Concursator, Cat Skirmisher, as this line's biology surprisingly focuses on indirect or misdirecting fighting tactics. I felt it fair to go with a Spanish-sounding genus here, though Gatos is also a Greek word, considering that they're from Paldea, a Spain-inspired region. Incineroar is the pinnacle of that which I hate in Pokemon design. Inconsistent morphology, anatomy, etc. all around. As a result, I'm bullying him and giving him the very simple and lame scientific name of Gatos Luchador, Cat Fighter. The Luchador part additionally fits with Incineroar being a wrestling deal. Pyroar's scientific name is Flamaleo Tribos. Tribos translates to tribe, or poor people for some reason, but Flama translates to heat in a fiery sense and a romantic sense. I felt it fitting for this Pokemon, so thoroughly focused on tribe and gender dynamics. Finally, we have an instance where the spine was not made more complex, but the tail itself was instead the focus. These Pokemon have all developed some sort of gland of mostly scent. Beware has the scent gland located in its rear, it's the little tag on Stuffle. Skuntank's gland is in its abdomen, though it sprays through its tail. The other sprig of Thievul and Smeargle may have their glands located in the same place or in the tail tips, leading me to put them further along in this branch. Evil uses it to mark prey and track them, while Smeargle uses it to mark territory with a major visual element rather than a scented one. Beware's scientific name is Mollersa Lacerti, meaning soft bear muscle, as the nymphs and adults are both incredibly strong and incredibly soft, with the adults also being known to crush people's spines from their hugs. Skuntank's scientific name is Carodor Impuritus, the genus meaning tail scent and the species meaning vile or impure. Evil and Smeargle would likely share a subfamily with Skuntank rather than a genus, but it's not a far stretch to say otherwise. That being said, Evil's species is Notatus, meaning mark, as it marks future heist targets, and Smeargle's is Tinctura, meaning die, for obvious reasons. Massive shout out to Niall, who managed to beat Incineroar in a wrestling match, and another shout out to Milan Sale, who managed to discover a third Snowrunt evolution. And of course, thanks to Soup Can and all my other patrons. You guys really encourage me to keep on going. It reminds me that people are actually wanting to see this content, and it encourages me to pump it out monthly, even though the last schedule has not looked like that. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment about whatever you'd want, and the next video is going to be about Sand Slash and it's a Lolan form. At some point, I'll have a post on the Patreon asking everyone for what they'd want next, and then that will come into a YouTube poll, and then you can vote there. Additionally, the quizzes will be starting up. Thanks, and have a great day.